Hey everyone, and welcome to the Deep Dive. We're taking a look at Mojo today. Mojo. This new programming language yeah. that's making a lot of noise, especially in the AI world. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to have all this power for handling like the really tough computational stuff, but still be kind of user friendly like Python. Right. So we're going to dive into that and see, you know, what's real and what's hype. Yeah, absolutely. We got a ton of articles and research papers and all that to go through. Um, I think. One of the things that is so exciting to so many people mm -hmm. is that Mojo is trying to solve this problem yeah. that has really plagued developers for a long time. What's that? And, you know, imagine trying to build a car, but all you have are, you know, bicycle tools. Okay. And you're trying to build like a super fast, you know, self-driving car. Yeah. And all you have are you know, spokes and wheels and, you know, handlebars. Right. <laughs> That's kind of the problem that we've had with some of the traditional languages when we're moving into AI and machine learning. And, you know, all of these things that require, you know, massive amounts of horsepower. Oh, I see. Mojo was kind of trying to bring that horsepower without sacrificing the ease of use that we've grown to love with Python. So is it fair to say that, um, like, a benefit of Mojo is that you don't have to be, like, a coding ninja to use it? Right, exactly. And I think that's why there's so much excitement around it. Gotcha. Because there's this potential that even if you're not, like, a hardcore low-level programmer, yeah, you can still get in and build these amazing applications. I think that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, it's still very early days for Mojo. Okay. But the potential is huge. Got it. Especially as these fields like artificial intelligence and machine learning just continue to grow. So let's unpack that a little bit. Right. What are some of the things that make Mojo so unique and maybe so powerful? Sure. One of the things that is so appealing about Mojo is that it's designed to work seamlessly with Python. Okay. And so it's not like they're trying to, you know, completely replace Python. Yep. It's more like they're saying, hey, we're going to, you know, give Python this superpower boost. Gotcha. And you can still use all of your favorite Python libraries like NumPy Pandas, all of that stuff. So I don't have to, like, learn a whole new language from scratch. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. And you can still get this massive performance improvement. So how does it do that? How does it give this like superpower boost? Well, one of the ways is by giving developers more control over how their code interacts with the hardware. Okay. And so um, you, you can think about it like fine tuning a car's engine. Yeah. To get you know that absolute best performance. Mm -hmm. And with Mojo, you can really optimize the code so that you're squeezing out every last ounce of performance out of the system. And this is particularly helpful for data-heavy tasks. Yes, especially for data-heavy tasks. Perfect. Things that involve you know, really complex computations oh, I see. where you need every bit of speed you can get. Got it. And to add to that, Mojo was also designed from the ground up to really leverage modern hardware like GPUs, okay. which are, you know, kind of the workhorse behind mm -hmm. AI and machine learning. Yeah. And so with Mojo, y you don't have to be a hardware expert yeah. to benefit from the incredible speed that these things offer. So this is kind of what enables it to be so much faster than some of the other. Uh, exactly. Partners. It's like having a purpose-built race car engine specifically for these tasks. I like that analogy. Are there any other features that we should know about that kind of contribute to the performance? Yeah, so another key aspect of Mojo is its support for parallel processing. Okay. And you can kind of think about parallel processing like having a team of mechanics okay. working on a car simultaneously. Gotcha. Instead of just one. Okay. And so Mojo allows you to take a task and break it down into smaller chunks yep. that can be executed concurrently on multiple processors. So that's what enables the speed up. Exactly. And so it drastically speeds up the overall process. Now, this is where it gets really interesting for me because one of the challenges I've always heard about with parallel processing is that it can be very difficult to implement right. and to get, right? right? So does Mojo make that easier? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mojo has all these built-in features okay. that really streamline the process of parallel processing. Gotcha. And so it's much more accessible to developers who might not be you know, experts in parallel programming. That's a huge advantage. Yeah. So we've been talking a lot about performance and speed and all that. Yeah. But I'm curious about the other side of the coin, which is, you know, ease of use. Right. Because sometimes high performance languages can be really tough to learn. Yeah. So what's the learning curve like for Mojo? Well, that's a great question. And I think the designers of Mojo were very aware of that potential pitfall. Okay. And so they've actually kept the syntax of Mojo very similar to Python. Oh, so you're not starting from scratch if you know yeah, Python. Exactly. And so if you're already familiar with the Python, 
picking up mojo is going to be a much smoother transition. So it's almost like learning a new dialect rather than a whole new language. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I like that. You're not starting from zero. Yeah. You have a foundation to build upon. But does that mean that they've had to sacrifice power or flexibility in order to keep it simple? No, not at all. And in fact, Mojo incorporates an advanced type system, okay. which helps to catch errors early on in the development process. Right, okay. And it also helps to ensure that the code runs more smoothly and efficiently. So it's kind of like having a spell checker built into the language that also helps the code run better. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. It's kind of like a spell checker and an optimizer all in one. I like that. And so you get you know, the best of both worlds there. So I'm starting to see why people are getting excited about this. Yeah. It seems like it, you know, offers performance yeah. and ease of use and compatibility with Python. Right. Where is it actually being used right now? Well, it's starting to make ways in a number of different fields. Okay. For example, in machine learning. Yeah. Researchers are already using Mojo to really speed up the process of training. Okay. These incredibly complex AI models gotcha. that power things like mm -hmm. you know, self-driving cars or personalized medicine. That's amazing. So it's kind of helping to accelerate the progress of AI development. Exactly. Yeah, it's allowing us to push the boundaries of what's possible with these models. Gotcha. And beyond just AI, it's also being used in areas where you need you know, massive amounts of computing power. Okay. Like scientific research, huh. large-scale data analysis, okay. high-performance computing. Wow. So it's kind of being used to tackle some of the world's biggest challenges. Yeah, exactly. I've even heard rumblings about it being used in embedded systems. Right. It's like the little tiny computers that are in everything nowadays. Yeah, and that's another area where Mojo really shines. Okay. Because it allows you to create these really efficient applications. Mm-hmm for devices that have very limited resources. Makes sense. And so you can kind of bring high performance yeah. to even the smallest of devices. That's really cool. Yeah. So we've talked about all the features we've talked about where it's being used, but for someone like me, you know, or anyone listening who's maybe thinking about using Mojo, yeah. what are the real benefits? Right. What's the impact on like their day-to-day -day work? Sure. I think one of the biggest benefits is that you can develop things so much faster Okay. Because, you know, things are running at lightning speed. Yeah. And it's not just speed. Okay. It's also about efficiency, right? Yeah. So you can actually squeeze more performance out of your hardware. Okay. Which can actually save you money. Gotcha. Especially if you're dealing with, you know, large data sets yeah. or running complex simulations. So it's like getting a performance boost and saving money at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's a win-win. I like that. Yeah. Now, you mentioned a couple times you know, this idea that Mojo gives developers more control. Over how their code interacts with the hardware. Yeah. Can you break that down for me? Yeah, sure. So let's take memory management as an example. Okay. Um, in a lot of languages, you know, memory allocation is handled automatically. Okay. Which can be convenient, yeah. but it's not always the most efficient. Right. Mojo gives you much more fine-grained control over how memory is used. Okay. So you can minimize overhead and maximize performance. Gotcha. It's kind of like being able to organize your workshop. Okay. Exactly the way you need it. Yeah. So everything just runs smoothly and efficiently. Okay, that makes sense. But doesn't that also make it more complex for the developer? It can, yeah. but I think Mojo strikes a really good balance. Okay. Where it provides you know, the tools for that fine-grained control yeah. without making things overly complicated. Gotcha. And remember, you can always fall back on the interoperability with Python right. and leverage those existing libraries and tools. Okay, cool. So it's not like you're completely on your own. So you have the option to really fine-tune things if you need to. Exactly. But you don't necessarily have to right. to get started. Okay, that's good. And as you become more comfortable, you can start to you know, explore those more advanced features. Now, we can't talk about performance without talking about hardware acceleration again. Right. We touched on this earlier. Yeah. But can we dive a little deeper into how Mojo actually interacts with GPUs and other specialized hardware? Sure. It still feels a little bit like magic to me. Yeah. I mean, it might feel like magic. Yeah. But it's really just some clever engineering. Okay. Um, essentially, Mojo is designed to really take full advantage of the parallel processing capabilities okay. of modern hardware. Yeah. GPUs, for example. Right. They're built with thousands of cores okay. that can all work simultaneously. Yeah. And that makes them perfect for, you know, these massive parallel computations I see. that you often need in AI and machine learning. So it's like having an army of processors all working together yes. instead <laughs> of just, you know, a single worker right. to solve a problem. Right. 
and Mojo's compiler, okay. which is the thing that you know translates your code into instructions the computer can understand. Yeah. It's actually designed to generate code okay. that is specifically optimized for these parallel architectures. Gotcha. So it's kind of like having, you know, a conductor yeah. that can mm. orchestrate this whole army of processors right. to work in perfect harmony. So it sounds like Mojo really takes a lot of the complexity out of parallel programming and hardware acceleration. Yeah. Which is a huge barrier for entry for a lot of developers. Exactly. So from a developer's perspective, what is it actually like working with Mojo? Right. Is it really as user friendly as they claim? You know, Mojo is really designed with Python developers in mind. Okay. They've kept the syntax okay. very similar to Python, yeah. very familiar, very approachable. Right. And so the learning curve is much gentler than you might expect. For a language that offers this kind of performance. Okay. It's not like you're having to learn yeah. you know, a completely new paradigm right. or a completely new way of thinking. So beyond just the syntax, right. what about like the overall developer experience? Yeah. What kind of tools and resources are available for Mojo development? Well, the ecosystem is still, you know, relatively young. Okay. But it's growing very rapidly. Okay. There are already some, you know, basic IDEs right. and debugging tools available. Yeah. And the community is constantly developing new libraries and frameworks. That's great. Yeah. And the core team is really good about listening to feedback okay. from the community. Yeah. So, you know, the tooling is constantly evolving and improving. That's encouraging. What about documentation and learning resources? Yeah, there's actually a lot of great documentation available. Okay. The Mojo team has done a fantastic job okay. of creating, you know, comprehensive documentation, yeah. tutorials, interactive coding exercises. They also host regular online meetups and workshops. Cool. So there's plenty of opportunities to, you know, learn from the experts and connect with other Mojo enthusiasts. So it's not like I'm just going to be, you know, thrown into the deep end without a life preserver. No, not at all. You'll have plenty of support. Okay, good. And the community is super welcoming to newcomers. That's good to hear. Yeah, you definitely won't feel lost or alone. That's great. Now, we've been talking a lot about all the potential of Mojo and all the yeah. cool things that, you know, it can do. Right. But I think it would be really helpful to see some specific examples of how it's actually being used in the real world today yeah. to really get a sense of the impact. Sure. Absolutely. So one really cool example is in the field of medical imaging. Okay. Um, there's a research team that's using Mojo to actually speed up the processing of MRI scans. Wow. So they can detect brain tumors much faster. That's amazing. So it's literally helping to like save lives yeah. by, uh, you know, accelerating diagnosis and treatment. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's making a real difference in patient care. Wow. That's incredible. Um, another example is in finance. Okay. There's a hedge fund okay. that's actually using Mojo to develop high frequency trading algorithms. Okay. And so the speed and efficiency of Mojo yeah. allows them to, you know, process vast amounts of market data right. in real time. So it's like having a supercharged trading platform that can make decisions in milliseconds. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's giving them, you know, a, a significant edge. That's really cool. Um, and then even in the gaming industry, okay. Mojo is being used to create, you know, more realistic and immersive game worlds. Yeah. It can handle, you know, these complex physics simulations. Okay. And render, you know, really stunning graphics and incredible speeds so it's not just about you know crunching numbers it's also about like creating really amazing experiences yeah exactly and it's really pushing the boundaries that's awesome of what's possible in game development it seems like it's being applied everywhere but let's be realistic yeah you know no technology is perfect yeah are there any downsides to mojo yeah of course so like any new technology yeah there are always growing pains Okay. I think one thing to keep in mind is that yeah. the Mojo ecosystem is still relatively young okay. compared to you know more established languages like Python or Java. Yeah. And so that means that there may be yeah. you know fewer third-party libraries and tools available okay. and you know the, the documentation might not be quite as extensive. So it's kind of like, you know, moving to a new city. Yeah. It's exciting, there's lots of potential. Yeah. <laughs> but you might have to, you know, Figure some things out as you go along. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of a pioneer in a way. Right. But the good news is that the Mojo community is incredibly active and supportive. Okay. That's good. Developers are constantly, you know, sharing their knowledge. Yeah. Creating new tools. Yeah. And contributing to the ecosystem. It's encouraging. So it sounds like there's a really strong community behind it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that community spirit okay. is one of Mojo's biggest strengths. Now, what about the learning curve? We talked about how, you know, Mojo is supposed to be pretty user friendly. Right. But are there any aspects that might be a little bit more challenging? Yeah. I mean, any language, even if it's designed for ease of use, mm -hmm. yeah. is going to have, you know, its quirks and complexities. Right. And Mojo is no exception. Gotcha. So the syntax is similar to Python. Right. But there are some areas where Mojo introduces yeah. some more advanced concepts yeah. that might take you know, a little bit more effort to really grasp. Okay. Um, for example, Mojo's TARC system okay. is very powerful and efficient. Yeah. But it's also more sophisticated than Python's type system. Okay. So it might take a bit of time uh, to really wrap your head around it. It's kind of like, you know, learning a new musical instrument. You yeah. might know the basic notes. Right. But mastering, you know, the more advanced techniques mm. takes a lot of, you know, time and practice. Exactly, yeah. It's a good analogy. Now, another thing that I think is important to acknowledge is that Mojo hasn't really achieved mainstream adoption yet. Right. It's getting there. It's gaining traction. But it's not as widely used as, you know, some of the other languages out there. Right. So what does that mean for someone who might be considering learning it? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like investing in a promising startup. Right. Yeah. The potential is huge. Yeah. But there's also some level of risk involved. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, it might be harder to find a job. Right. Specifically for Mojo development. Yeah. At least in the short term. Okay. But, you know, I have a feeling that Mojo's adoption is really going to explode over the next few years. Okay. So let's say I'm intrigued. Yeah. And I want to, you know, learn more. Right. Where's a good place to start? I think the official Mojo website is a great place to start. Okay. They've got, you know, tons of uh, documentation. Okay. Tutorials. Yeah. Interactive coding examples. Nice. To really help you get up to speed quickly. And don't forget about the community. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And the community is amazing. Yeah. There's active forums, online meetups, wow. you know, dedicated Slack channels nice. where you can really connect with other Mojo enthusiasts and ask questions and share experiences. So as we kind of wrap up this deep dive into Mojo, yeah, what are your final thoughts? What's the big takeaway here? I think Mojo is a really exciting development in the programming world. OK. It offers, you know, this unique combination of performance ease of use yeah and it's really focused on you know the future of computing okay with its embrace of you know modern hardware and parallel processing it sounds like mojo is really poised to change the game in fields like ai machine learning high performance computing yeah absolutely and maybe even beyond yeah who knows where it will go from here but the potential is enormous so whether you're a seasoned developer right. or just starting out mojo is definitely worth taking a look at that's a great point to end on Thanks so much for joining me today on this deep dive into Mojo. Yeah, this was fun. We hope you learned some things. And until next time, happy coding. <laughs>